So, and somebody thought you're Mike Tyson. Shit. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. uh, I get that sometimes. Yeah. Mike from the back, Holyfield from the front. Yeah. <laughs> <All right. laughs> What's up, my man? How you doing, brother? Oh, it's been a minute. All right, bro. Let me let me get this TV off. So you are in uh, Columbus already? Yeah, I'm in Columbus now. Are you at the hotel or are you guys in, 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 at the Hilton? You staying at the Hilton too? Okay. Well. Yeah, but Breon's at the Marriott. Oh yeah. So yeah, what? Why is he, that? He, he can cook. He got. He can got the the quick um, full kitchen there. Oh okay. Oh, it's like the residence in. Yeah. Oh okay. How's everything going, man? Everything's going well. Yeah. Everything's going well. So is he? Uh, is he? Is he going to win the Arnold? I think so. Yeah. <laughs> I think so. Yeah. I mean, it's it's a tough go. It's a, it's just like it's a basically the uh, the Mr. Olympia contest all over again. Right. Without so Chris nothing, Bumstead. Nothing easy. Nothing gonna be easy there. And you know, he's got these these guys are like, you know, mid twenties on average. Some of these guys he's going yeah. against. It's a different look. So just gonna have to make sure. Uh, you know, and it depends on how you wake up that day. You know how that works. Yeah. But, so, uh, but because I know you've been with 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 Brian for for a few years now. So when you look at him today, and you compare him to, let's say when he won the uh, Classic Physique Olympia, where where is he? Uh, I think more. And don't even worry because this is not going to air until Sunday, so it's going to be after the Arnold, anyways. Oh uh, yeah, no, yeah. I mean, I think for more or less, um, he is. Uh, uh, he has better control of different body parts. Uh, you know, at first we had different issues or different situations that we needed to improve on, uh, as far as you know, ab department. And, uh, you know, chest and uh, his, his back developed quickly, but just working, working my way around his physique, mm. um, you know, um, and then getting the right poses and tinkering with the right poses as you get a little older, all that stuff uh, matters. How you hit your side chest, how you, you know, what side you use, all these different things come into play as you start to evolve into uh, the bodybuilder that you're going to be, you know? Yeah. But for, for me, it's it's crazy to see how um, Brian has not lost faith in that he could still win the shows. I mean, the way he, I don't think anybody is more active on social media than he is when it comes to uh, uh, um, um, showing his progress. And, uh, you know, and, and even though a lot of people say that, you know, his time has passed, I think... I I, yeah, go ahead. I th yeah. I think that he looks better than ever. Yeah, he he's he, I mean, he definitely is a hard worker. I haven't seen I don't I don't know how these other guys prepare, but you've seen him close up. You've seen him at work. You saw how his he's diligent. Mm. He never I mean, he you see his his He's at his place of business every day. Yeah, you know, and people don't understand that he is even more impressive in real life. Oh, definitely. That's, yeah. yeah, that's one thing I hate. Like, and I want to see more. Um, I think, I think after this year, you'll start to see a little more and more. Um, you know, that's that's up him to to uh, to want to get to that point. But I I I personally like to see him in the two twelve coming up next year. So you feel the and, same? Uh, because I think. And like I say, you've seen him at a heavier weight. You mm -hmm. see what he actually has. I and saw him where he still had to, I think, eight pounds to lose, and he was peeled. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah. And he was and peeled. Crazy. Like, where are you going to get it from? Yeah. You know? You're going to have to take away from what you have to get to that point. I don't even know who even came up with these weight, these weights for these heights. <laughs> 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 I want to see that person to talk to him. Yeah. <laughs> wait, wait, wait. Where would you say where what would you say would be his perfect weight? Because you see him leading up to shows, you know where he's at his, at his best weight wise. Oh, Fifteen pounds heavier, oh, at least one ninety five. So he's one ninety five right now. No, no, that's at, at one ninety five. 
he's at his he's at his wow. he's peaking out. Yeah. So and what's his cutoff? One eighty. So he's got to drop fifteen pounds from being at his best to make yeah. it. Into, oh, that's fucking that's crazy. Why yeah, so would he do he, that to so him? He's though? in the mid he's in the mid eighties right now. But so why why would he do that? He, does he suffer to get down? It's hard, man. It's hard. Why would he do that? And that's that? the thing. And that's the thing. I have the experience to get down. I used to wrestle. Uh -huh. I know been, between wrestling and bodybuilding, I know how to drop weight. And I know you can't do just anything. You can't just take something and manufacture yourself down. You have to physically get yourself down to mm. actually look, to keep the muscle looking the best. That would be a big mistake. And I know he's made some mistakes, but people got to realize he started this thing late. He didn't, he wasn't a teenager doing this thing. He was, you know, I think it was his late twenties or early thirties. No, it was been his early thirties that he started bodybuilding. That's why he's still so fresh. Yeah. He's not beat up at all. Yeah. 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 So he's, uh, and he has some quick success. So just because you turn pro down, I mean, you have the experience of going in and out of a show, going uh, the processing in which you take uh, to get ready for a competition either. Mm. That, that's, you know, that still bumps in a row for a person like him who had fast success and, you know, in my opinion, <clears throat> could have had uh, more missed on a good titles than what he has. Mm. Yeah. What, what, what do you think about this newer guys coming up, this guy from Germany, Urs, and the guy from Brazil? I'm a huge fan of those guys. Yeah. You know, they're, they're young. They remind me of, uh, you know, how when I was younger, they're just hungry and they just, they're just they striving to get better and better. They're only going to get better. Right. Uh, you know, and what process they take, if they're trying to rush it, uh, that's going to be on them. But, but I've spoken, you know, to, to both of those guys before and gave them, uh, uh, you know, uh, great respect uh, for both of those guys. Uh, they have a great attitude. Um, they have a lot of good, great fan base behind them. Mm -hmm. And I told him, I told the uh, Uris, uh his his uh, his ceiling is so high. He has no idea. Yeah, you know, yeah. being uh, 22 and you know, and, and doing being one of the best in the world. I knew he was going to be one of the best when I met him down in Mexico. And I was like, dude, you you already. That's when he got second. Already, yeah. yeah, I said I, but I, I told I, him I would have picked him to win. Yeah, I, I had him winning. Yeah. But uh, he, uh, you know, the guy that was ahead of him was a little bit older, had a little bit different look. But I, I definitely thought he won that show. I told him that also. Uh, so he knows that. Yeah. Uh, but I told him it's only a matter of time. So just don't try to rush it because it's already there. You're already one of the best. So all you have yeah. to do is slowly put yourself together and, and go and get what's yours. I remember him from Germany when he was 19, just before yeah. the pro qualifier. He came to me in the gym where I trained in Germany and he came up and he asked me if I can look at him. Yeah. yeah and he's, he's and that was, that. and that was actually standing next to Mike Sommerfeld, who was the other guy, the one that beat him in Mexico. Oh yeah. So they were, they were, ah, they were there together. Like they both Germany, right? Yeah. 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 So they, and that they, Drew Dart? Where's that from? No, no, no. That's, that's Waldorf where I'm from. So he is from, uh, Urs is from, I think he's in Berlin, but he was in Switzerland for a while as a teacher. And, uh, Mike Sommerfeld is also from Heidelberg, where I was raised and born and raised. So I look at him and I tell him, I said, first of all, I said, you're a pro. And I said, you will make it to the Olympia. I told him that in 2019, before he turned pro. Right. And then uh, he got his pro card. And then at my show in 2019, wait, 2000, yeah, 2019, my show in Germany, I told him, I said, jump in the show, man. You're a pro now. Jump in the show. You think I should? You think I'm ready? I said, hell yeah, you're ready. <laughs> he jumped in the show, got first call out fifth place. You know? Uh, and, how old was he? 20. Just 19 or 20. It's like three years ago. He's 23 wow. now. He's 23 now. He just turned 23. Wow. So he's, this guy is a feature. Yeah, it's a great. Yeah, I just told him, you know, and, you know, he has a a little bit longer limbs and the arms and stuff. I told him just, you could disguise that by mm. not being so crazy with your movements and not so... Yeah, it's his mom. Wrong. His it's... mom's a ballet dancer, so they do their posing thing together. <laughs> yeah. I think he's going to be, I think he's going to be a, think he's gonna yeah. be a, a good, a nice surprise at the Arnold because he's put on some weight. 
you yeah. know? And he still has 10 pounds that he can add to his frame before he, you know, makes a limit. Yeah, that's how, and how he's, he's, what is he, six, six feet? Yeah, he's about, about six yeah, he's tall. six, he's a taller guy, yeah. Yeah, so, yeah, man, and he's, uh, uh, he's hungry, he's hungry for it all, so. Yeah. 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 So if if you look at uh, Terrence Ruffin right now, as as the you know everybody's talking, Terrence and Brian going to be fighting for the title. So what do you what, where where do you see Brian beating Terrence? Where? Where? Well, I just think, I mean, because he, like he wasn't Breon's able to. Better. I like Brian's yeah. arms better. I like Brian's, um, you know, abs better. Why? You, why is shoot, it? Uh, why do you think this is Terrence be, be, beaten Brown in the last two Olympics? I have no idea. I don't know. I think he's been a little bit on the smoother side for my taste, uh, as far as like to separational. But that's what I mean. Classic for me is different for a lot of people. They mm. don't. I don't think this generation cares to judge the way I would judge. Mm. I would judge like you. Like like you say, you saw Brian close up. You saw oh. the separation between the bicep. Undeniable. The bicep. Undeniable. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? I look at when I say classic, I'm talking about separational <laughs> muscle group developed, moving. You can see everything can you got striations. Striations come in a big part for me because uh when I was competing, it's a different show now, but when I was competing, that meant a lot. Mm -hmm. Uh and the judging don't they don't really judge on that sometimes. I think they kind of look like it as there's an open bodybuilding show. And they're looking at the, the, the biggest frame. It's like, how could it be the biggest frame when they had smaller frame guys winning at the first three years? Mm. And then Terrence is shorter than him. But no one ever mentions that he's shorter than Breon. Right. So it's not about a size thing, right? Because right. they were saying Classic is going size. Classic is going bigger. How's it going bigger if Terrence has been second the last two years? Mm -hmm. It's not going bigger. It's just you're supposed to... You know, judge the best thing you see. Um, he has some, uh, he contorts his body into some nice shapes. I, I think that's a great strength for him. Uh, I think the legs come in a little smooth for my liking from the front. I would like cuts deeper. And that's just my my, my yeah. opinion on on the sport, on, uh, on bodybuilding. I hear you. I'm Let, more that guy. Let's talk about you. Let's talk about the real deal. People always ask how I got here. I was willing to work just a little harder than everyone else. Every damn day. If I can have hundreds of hours back, you know I'm gonna grab them. Spending hours prepping chicken, rice, and vegetables, F that. I rely on perfect nutrition. I rely on trifecta. A long, long bodybuilding oh, career. <laughs> a long <laughs> bodybuilding career, man. What was the exact reason after a long, career, successful career? I mean, you had one of the better careers, of course, with multiple crazy wins. But what was the, what was the real reason for you? What makes you decide to retire? I didn't want to retire. Um, it was the, the injuries. Like, let's say... Um, I was in, you know, going through this sport, I was being primed and ready to be a professional when I was an amateur, when I was a teenager. Mm -hmm. I was around the right people, doing the right things. Uh, you know, I was brought up through uh, with uh, Robbie Robinson um, for the most part. Robbie's been in my life uh, most of my career life, uh, even from a teenager. Mm -hmm. um, went on, I trained with Charles at the latter part of my career, then mixed that in with Charles Glass also. Um, some dealings with uh, 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 Gary Stridham. He was a big influence in my career also. Oh, okay. I didn't know that. Oh, yeah. So in 91, 91, I was I was his straight-up training partner. Is that when he was training for the, uh, what's the, yeah. Yeah. the yeah. WBF? Yeah, yeah. yeah. When he was looking the best he ever did in his life, I was his training partner. Yeah. He was whooping my ass up and down the gym. Really? I, I remember one time, it was funny, because I'm always uh, fashionably late, about 10 minutes to the workout. And so I come in one day, he's doing arm curls, and he was just looking in the mirror, and I walk up, I was smiling, and I will jipper, and I'm all like, hey, 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 
Hey, Gary. He looked at me as, um, no highs, no hello, just fucking warm up. Like, <laughs> I was like, <laughs> I was like, oh, I mean, this is commenced to whipping my butt. Yeah. All, all, gym, all the all the time in the gym, man. He was crazy training. Yeah, see, I didn't know that. I remember the WBF. I was watching it. That was 91. I wasn't even working out at that time. Really? I, I, I just, came in late. I started training in 92. So, really? Yeah. Yeah. Crazy, <laughs> yeah. So I uh, I remember when I watched, um, um, it was it was on, I don't know, was it, re, it was first, it was, I mean, it was v, in, v, VHS, VHS. Yeah. And I saw that, you know, and I remember that, you know, I remember exactly when I followed this and I was like, WBF and all these guys from the IFB switched over because they got paid. Gary told me he got a million dollars a year for two year contract, two year deal. And even though he didn't. Yeah, he, yeah, he had four, he had 400,000. Four hundred thousand, four hundred thousand. He told me a million in a million. So, yeah, yeah, but yeah, I guess, yeah, yeah. He's gonna add it up like that, of course. <laughs> Anyways, hey, when he would start his, he would start his reps. He would say one thousand, two thousand, <laughs> three thousand. <000. laughs> I remember because I, I, I trained, time. I trained with him too. Later though, later though, at my That's beginning. Crazy, right? So when, when, um, what I was saying is, and, and I remember that they drug test that show. Everybody was fat and flabby. And fucking Gary was fucking loaded to the to the, to the max. <laughs> <laughs> he was loaded Gary to the max. To the club because I worked at Roxbury at the time. He would come into the club. The last two weeks he was just cruising. I never seen him do cardio. I never seen him do anything like that. He was just he ate, you know, two meals at a time, and he trained like a son of a gun. Yeah, you know, yeah. I never seen him do cardio the whole time. I remember back in ninety four, ninety four. Whenever it was, he came to Thailand, and I saw him in Thailand for the first time, so I knew him from the magazines. Okay. You know, and I'm, I seen him in Thailand, and I remember, I remember he stayed in my house, and then uh, we started training together back in 94. I remember, I was really? just an amateur. Yeah, I didn't think, I, you know. How did, how did he do with those leg extensions? Because with me, he had me trying to do 30 and 40 and 50 reps I, on the you, leg extension. You know what? I don't remember. I don't remember exactly. You remember how, that? I don't remember exactly yeah, how we do. But I was at a point where I was, I just placed second at the universe for Naba. And I was just, you know, my, I was just hungry. And you, can, you can imagine. I was like, I'm going to win this thing. Right. Then here come Gary. That extra motivation. We're in the gym training, you know, and he always like to disappear, you know, and then he comes back and I was like, what is wrong with this guy? What is he doing? You know, he was, <laughs> he was always, yeah. he was always laid back then, you know, and, and he would always, you know, disappear for 10, 15 minutes. He'll take, he's got this little pouch, you know, Oh yeah. and, oh, yeah. Then, yeah, and then he'll come back. <laughs> so I didn't know, and I was stupid, you know, I dumb, I didn't know. I didn't know nothing about New Bane, you know, I had no idea about none right, of that right, stuff. Right, right, right. You know, so uh, anyway, so we trained together. <laughs> and I remember every time he came back to Thailand, he brought me all the damaged goods that they couldn't sell for crazy wear. He brought me boxes of that shit, and I sold it in my gym in Thailand. Oh, wow. Yeah, you That's know, amazing. I remember that. I remember that. And then, uh, you know, and then I, you know, I learned, you know, what, you know, I said about Nubain that, I, you know, I'm not a fan of that stuff. You know, right. you know, I, I didn't, I, I didn't, I didn't understand it. So, but I realized that this was something that was very common in bodybuilding. Later, right. you know, right. I didn't, I didn't know, you know, especially right. when, when I saw, um, I remember when I won the USA in '98, and you probably remember that too. That the guys from Hawaii they always brought the, the USA champion to guest post at a show in Hawaii at the end of the year at the uh, yeah. Paradise Cup. Oh yeah, you remember I that. Did it. So, yeah, yeah, yeah. So they flew me in from Thailand in '98, and there was with me. There was uh, um, Tom Prince and uh, Yolanda Hughes. Remember Yolanda? Oh, of course. Yeah, she was with us. So we all the guest oh, posers, yeah. right? And I remember, I, I, you know, I, I knew Tom. You know, I competed against him in, ni in, in the nationals in '97. But I didn't really know him. So, and it, it, this is all still new to me, you know? So I remember I check in at the Sheraton in Waikiki and then Tom calls me, he says, hey man, you know, come on down to the room. So I come down to his room and you know, we're talking, you know, he was a cool dude, you know Tom, he was a cool dude. <laughs> but he was so cool that it was, everything was normal to him, you know? And I'm sitting here, fucking rookie still, I guess. Uh, you know, so he's talking to me and while he's talking to me, he's like, 
Oh, shit. <laughs> Chris, I thought I was like, what the fuck is going on now? I didn't know. <laughs> I heard about New Brain, but I didn't know that shit goes into your vein. Right. You know, if you, you don't put, have to. I don't, don't know. Have. I didn't know. I think something yeah. goes if something goes into your vein, I think it's heroin. You know, I'm thinking yeah. the worst. So I'm like, you know, I was like, yeah, and then he's talking to me while he's doing it, like this is normal. And I'm like, I'm trying not to look dumb. And he was like, oh yeah. I said, I said, well, hey Tom, what because there was bot- there was bo- there was bottles everywhere. I said, Tom, what is this? He said, Oh, that's just new pain. You want some? I said, No. Yeah. <laughs> They go to bodybuilders, they, they take taking stuff to burn fat, they take taking yeah. stuff to block pain, they take taking stuff to get bigger. They yeah, but I came, from Th- I, I came from Thailand. I had no idea. I knew yeah. about steroids, and that was it. And I remember when I saw later on, I saw Yolanda. I said, Yolanda. I, I told her, I said, this dude, it's just right in front of me. What? She acted like she didn't know, she didn't know it either. So we get picked. No, she we, probably didn't. We get, but listen, I, I remember when you came to Gold's Gym. I was there. The first day you walked in, I was there. 97 or 98? The first time you walked into the gym. you never been there before. The first time was 97 in... Okay. It was 97. Yeah, you went there. You went against uh, Melvin. No, that was 98. 98. Okay. That was 98. So the first time I walked in was 97. And that was okay. because of Gary. Oh, okay, okay, okay. Because Gary... I saw you walking around and you had his tank top on. I thought you was... Uh, <laughs> I thought you was... Uh, homeboy, I thought you was... Uh, uh, who did I think you were? I thought you was Kevin LeBron. That's what a lot of people thought. You know, I, I thought like, you was Kevin. I was like, man, who was this dude? I was like, yeah. That guy looks like Kevin. I yeah. said, he's like Kevin. That was not, yeah, yeah, yeah you, you, you saw me in 98. You saw me in 98. Yeah, exactly. You I had, had your hair. hair called back like Kevin. Oh, yeah. I had, like, I, like, I had some, I had my, I had my S curl in there. Oh, yeah. So, yeah. yeah. So, yeah, so if I was coaching you, I would have had you stay just like that the rest of your career. If trust, I was coaching you. trust me, if I would but coach myself, if I would coach over, myself, over, I would do the same. And I was like, okay. Cool. <laughs> 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 no, but if I if I if I would have coached myself today, I would probably do the same. I would never get big. Too you would have stayed. Oh, yeah. You are, you had you had better shape. Yes. Had, uh, that was a that was a dangerous Dennis James. That but you we got so big. Like, think about that, because a lot of people put so much into being big, big, big. But guess what? You're you're not doing the best for your physique. I, I want to say that I to know, these young guys, I know, but d- just, if I didn't, didn't know that, it. I didn't know at the time. What am I supposed to do? I'm thinking I'm so doing the say, right thing. I'm, let's say I'm, you could eat yourself to 300 pounds. Hmm. Did that particularly make you a good bodybuilder? No. no. There's a good weight that's probably going to be better for you at maybe 15, 20 pounds lighter. Same thing with flex. Uh-huh. I said the same with flex. I saw him trying to be bigger and bigger and bigger. I was like, dude, you're like 15, 20 pounds over where you're going to be at your best. Yeah. So I was never, I was like, okay, do that game. Cause I never, I didn't never play that game. No, I never played that game. You, you never, never, you never thought you had to get bigger. I tried to go, I, I tried to go up there cause I was curious about how I'd look at 300 pounds. Soon I get up there, I couldn't breathe. I couldn't walk. I couldn't do anything. I was like, no, I said, I, I need to come down. 293 and 290 was my good off-season, off-season. weight. Yeah. yeah. What was your there. weight contest? Well, your real contest weight? Not the week before, not the day before, the day of the 53, show. 253. 253. Yeah. I remember when we came, uh, we went to the Arnold. We, I think we were on the same plane going to the Arnold in 2001. But that was, I was 249. I know, but I, I know, I but told, I tell you what I remember. Because I, I was talking to, 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 to I was talking to, Dorian and he was like, Chris, he's like, you at five pounds lighter is gonna look you're gonna look just as big. Don't I was just so caught up into trying to be over two fifty because I knew Lee Haney was around two fifty. I was always trying to be like a Lee Haney clone mm. as much as I could. I never had the chest, but I he uh he was like, if you come down, you're gonna still look just as big. Yeah. So why don't you just come down and you know, I guarantee you, we came at 245. I was like, oh, 245 about the question. But I'll, I'll try 248, 249. I rem- like but I remember when we drove, I think we, 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 we were somewhere back then. Remember, they used to pick us up from the hotel and they'd take us to the venue and show us around. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. And I remember that year, I said, yeah, Ronnie did it. And you remember, someone said Ronnie's going to be in the, two, in the low 240s. 
And I remember you saying, we were in the bus. Oh, I'm going to get them today. I'm going to get them this time. <laughs> you know why? You know why? Because right, you, you thought you why? were bigger. No, listen. If you remember, I didn't know you <coughs> before that. I got sick in Mexico. 2000? And that was in Mexico. I was 280 pounds. 2000? You didn't do the Olympia? No, I didn't do the Olympia. Because I was in Mexico. I was in Mexico. And I got, I had a, <laughs> I'm taking too much GH and it messed with my blood sugar. I didn't know. I thought it was so much messed up. In me. Increases so like, your I'm blood sugar, competing. yeah. I'm not competing. I'm sitting it out. But I was in shape already. That was and 2000 man, that you set out? I thought you set out another year. 2003. 2000. You set out 2003. Well, 2000, I didn't do it because of that. I was in the six in Mexico, I think. Because it was that, listen, because it was after 99. 99, I had a good showing. Yes. And then I didn't get a chance to do 2000 because okay. I so, did the Iron, Iron Man and I was in, doing a tour in Mexico. I got sick. I didn't realize that that affected your blood sugar. That's why I tell a lot of young guys also, it's not about taking more and more and more, especially stuff like GH, because it's going to affect you your blood sugar levels, and you're going to be jacked up. So yeah. It's not about that. People don't understand know? GH will increase your, your, your blood sugar. Right. Yeah. Do not. I didn't know it either. Years later, I, re I was reading a pamphlet. I'm like, it's right here. <laughs> like, I would, <laughs> I could have done the Olympia. I yeah. was fine. I just yeah. didn't know. I didn't oh, know. I didn't so you thought you you, you thought yeah. you were diabetic and you you so just thought, pumped yeah. out. So I thought I thought I just throw an after party and call it a, call it a weekend, <laughs> and then <laughs> you would miss the that's after what party. I the after party. Yeah. So that was yeah, the, so, so you set out the two thousand Olympia. You did the two thousand on But listen, because, but listen. So so Ronnie was two eighty. At that show, or two, whatever he was. Two forty-six. He said two forty-six. No, I'm at the Olympia. The Olympia before oh, that. Oh, I don't know the Olympia in two. Uh, well, yeah, in, the Olympia in two thousand, he, he wasn't in great shape. He had a stomach that was out the here. Yeah. But he won the Olympia, and it wasn't. It wasn't. No one really challenged him. He but, had just a pinstripe between his quad and his glute. He had no, no much cuts going on. And I'm sitting in the audience, like, damn, I could have got this guy if I would have just came in, right? Yeah. So. Then I'm talking to Chad. Chad has worked with him also. And I'm like, and I'm, and that's when everybody's putting a rumor out, Ronnie's gonna be 300 pounds next time he competes. And I'm like, okay, I'm gonna do the Arnold then, because I was like charged up. But I was I had tears in my eyes watching that Olympia in the audience. And when I went to get ready for the Arnold, I said, I'm gonna come in lighter since they said Ronnie wants to get bigger. And then next thing you know, I'm talking loosely to Chad. So yeah, I want to come in tighter this time, lighter, lighter than ever. And then next thing you know, it just so happened two, three months later after the Olympia, the Arnold, this guy is 20 pounds lighter also. Did you know he was doing it? How early did you find out? Bro, I, I knew he was doing it, but like I said, I was said, let him come, let him come at 280. Uh -huh. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to wipe him out. Yeah. I'm going to be lighter. I'm gonna make him. I'm gonna make a sculpture next to him, but then next thing you know, he's the same weight as I am at the damn show. And then I thought, okay, at the Olympia, he's not used to going from the Arnold Olympia, Olympia Arnold. Mm. I was doing that already. He wasn't used to it, and that was the last time he did it. If you remember, yeah. that was the last time he was never gonna. Because it's hard. It's hard, and that's why with myself, it was hard to peak at the Olympia and the Arnold and those shows in between, and then still have a great physique for the Olympia. It was not going to... What, 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 what do you think is the reason for you to be, to be able to do it as a bigger guy and, uh, and still being able to look good in both shows? Because it's hard for me to even put on weight. Okay. It's hard. I was never really changing that much after a show. Like, yeah, a month later, I'm still fine. Like, some guys, like Flex, would be dramatically smaller after a show. I would be even kill. Yeah. I, I didn't change. I never really got really fat. I never got super, super small, but I was, I was always clean to that. I was, I was averaging eight to 10 to 12 shows a year. Mm. If you remember. Yeah. Yeah. So that, I think that had a big, strong case of, you know, I was, it was hard to improve a whole lot, but it was also, it was easy to be in shape, but, uh, it was really dicey about when you're going to be hard because 
if you think about it, a lot of we a lot of guys got in trouble when they tried to get really, really super peeled. So that was never my thing. I was like, no, man, this guy is, is not on the tour anymore for a reason because he tried to get extra, extra peeled. So I was just trying to be close to it, but that was never my thing to be extra crazy on trying to uh, drop so much water and drop so much, uh, you know, get into that red, that zone where it's, it's dangerous. I, I didn't, that wasn't my, my, mm. my thing for bodybuilding. But but you were known and everybody and I was I'm still saying to this day I, I'm so impressed with I don't even know how you did all that, you managed to compete at the highest level and party at the highest level at the same time. <laughs> Nobody I know that competed at the highest level was able to do that. A lot of people tried. A lot of people tried. <laughs> a lot of people tried, but they all failed. I've seen them. I seen them, then, and a lot of but, people was asking me, you know, they wanted to hang out. They wanted. To, I said, dude, like, no, man. I said uh, that was just my way of blowing off steam. I had a lot of pressure on myself. If you remember, I was with Weeder for the first seven, eight years of my career, and you had to come every year to get a new contract. So you have a lot of pressure on, on yourself to be at your best when you compete because you have to go answer to Joe and explain why you deserve to get a raise or why you deserve to have a contract basically each year. Yeah. So, uh, did, did I, did I ever tell you when I first visited Joe Weider back in 19, it was in 99 or 2000, they called me into the office and, mm -hmm. uh, and Joe was in there with his suit on and his tennis shoes. Oh yeah. And then he says, uh, take That's your, sh take your shirt off. And then, uh, I took my shirt off and then he asked me, if you don't know what he asked me, you think yeah, he, he you, no 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 you think you think you can beat Chris Comier? <laughs> no, he didn't. I swear to God, he asked. <laughs> that's the question he asked me. And hey, what did you say? I said, "Yeah." Hell no. <laughs> you should have said, I, "Hell no." No, Jake, I can't do that. I said, "Yes, no. I think I can." And then he called, took the phone, called to Peter McGuff at the other office. I said, "Write up the contract." That's where I got my contract. Okay, so check this out. <laughs> when I met Joe, I, I didn't have an interview. I didn't have a, a meeting. I went there with 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 uh, Paul Dillette, and he slid me in the door. Like he said, he's got a meeting. I went up there, and I'm like, yeah, just come up there. I'm going to introduce you to Joe. He said, okay. I came up there, and were you right in the office, right in that, you know, he liked to stand people right by that table right here. And he goes, the first thing he asked me is, do you have any legs? That's why I asked you that. Yeah. And I pull my pants down. I'm like, that's like my best body part. Like, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and then he's like, oh. Then he's like, take off your shirt. I took off my shirt. I hit some shots. And then it was, this is like two weeks before the, the USA. I was an amateur. And he was like, okay, I'm going to sign you to a contract. Don't shoot with anybody. That was his thing. Don't shoot with anybody. That was yeah. the first thing he'd tell you, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Don't yeah. shoot with anybody. He wants to get the photos of you. So... I did, I, I, I left there in tears. I'm like, oh man, I finally made it through where I want to be. I'm leaving all emotional. Uh, I go and I actually win the whole overall everything. No one picked me to win the show, not even my, my, my training partners. Picked back me in, 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 in 92. 90, 93. 93. Yeah, 93. Our 92 was Flex then. Yeah, I trained with Flex for when he won it, but then it was my turn to win it. And uh, I won it, so I'm like, okay, cool. I'm gonna go get this contract, Every, the sky's the limit. I'm already going out the door every week to guest post, because then everyone wanted you to guest post, no yeah. matter what. And that left somehow, but no matter what, I was out every weekend, so I was making a lot of money. Uh, so I went up there to see Joe, and he didn't even see me. He, he sent me down to Tom Dieters. I said, I'll, I'll meet with Tom Dieters. Okay, he's like, we don't have a contract for you. I'm like, <laughs> we don't have a contract for you. Okay, so what do you want me to do? He's like, well, you see, like Leo Brada, he makes these stories. He, you know, he writes for us. He does little things. So I said, okay, I'm gonna start going up. So I started making a lot of trips to, to the Weeder office to make those, you know, might write little articles and stuff like that. But it then it wasn't until six months in, and I did a, a photo shoot after I took second at the Arnold. And I had this army gear on and he liked the photos and he wanted me to be 
on the uh, a weeder athlete because he liked my photos that I took with the army gear on. Uh -huh. That was it. Oh, okay. It wasn't because of my athletic. It wasn't because of no show I won. That was never gonna get it for me. Yeah. Because as you know, I I took sixth. You diet down, train hard, and supplement smart for months. When the time comes to step on stage, don't leave your tan to chance. Go with the pros. Pro Tan. Number one worldwide since 1987 and the official sponsor of the Olympia for the last 15 years. Don't step on stage without it. Pro Tan. My first year in the, in the pros, I took sixth in the Olympia. I took sixth the next year, but it was never, it was people make more money than me that was lesser than me as in competition. Right, right? But they, they were behind they you. They the photos. So yeah. have, you ever, have you ever set yourself down and said like, what if I would have just not partied all the time and just focused solely on bodybuilding? Well, here's the thing. I still placed where I placed. I understand. Only, I understand. No, listen, listen, but listen, that, that didn't stop me from winning Olympia. I was about two cc's less than everybody else. Yeah. That's, I was, it was more like a side injection thing that people beat me on. It wasn't anything else. Yeah. I party after the show. I didn't party. Okay. Oh, come on now. Too. Come on now. I know a story I, of Chris Camille partying out there the night before the Olympia. No, I was in the strip club. The night well, what's the, the difference? <laughs> I just went. I, I, I ate on my <laughs> Who food. goes? To do. Who I hate Chicago? And that story ran for me. Actually, do, I was like, doing Chris, anything. Chris, I'm drinking water. The night before the Olympia, I, I sit in my room and I'm fucking. I'm visualizing. You in the strip club getting lap dances. Come on, man. <laughs> I didn't get a lap dance. <laughs> I was checking out the local talent. <laughs> <laughs> that is crazy. That's crazy. So I, I, ate all the, I ate everything. I had nothing else to do. So I, was, I went out. So everyone was freaking out. And that stuff carried over into, you know, making a bigger, bigger snowball. Yeah. But I wasn't harming my condition or anything like that. Uh, but right after the show, I was looking to go. I didn't want to eat any food. I just want to go out and have a good time. Yeah. You know, that was that was my that was my release from all the. I mean, I would be in the gym two and three times in a day. You know, getting ready for the show. Yeah, but and I, I also thing. know. People, I also, and people thought that I wasn't training hard. Like, what are you talking? That that is that that yeah. infuriates me. Yeah, yeah. I, I get that, and that's that's something <laughs> I, I can vouch for. That you definitely train hard. Hard. But but there's stories that a lot of people don't know. And just because you mentioned that you party after the show and you know photo yeah. shoots, some photo shoots are after the show. <laughs> you know where I'm going with this. <laughs> so I'm coming straight from the club. <laughs> <laughs> going to almost going to sleep during the photo shoot. Going to sleep. No, I'm going to sleep. <laughs> Do you is there anything in your career that you regret that you said if I could back, if I could turn back the time I would not do that? Um well um I'll tell you one thing I'm I'm regret the most is uh and I'm not putting anyone down. I'm not saying anyone's fault. It's you know, it's it's my career, it's my my thing to do, me to bring out the best of myself. But <clears throat> I feel like I got complacent with this is what i'm doing i'm com i got comfortable you know uh once you, once a lot of people eat you know they can get comfortable mm -hmm. a lot of boxers wrestler you know anybody football players they get comfortable after they 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 get a taste of the success uh i think i got too comfortable and it was okay with being comfortable when i should have been uncomfortable mm -hmm. i should have been scared to go to the gym and train because I don't know what's gonna happen in there. It's gonna be crazy. Right. It wasn't like it wasn't like that for me, and I was and I was too okay with it. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? I knew how to get in shape. I knew uh, what what cuts to look for at what period of time I need to be at this level in my condition. Uh, I was getting offers to go train with Dorian uh, when I was 34 and 35. <clears throat> and I was getting ex examples. I was getting advice from from uh, Jim Mannion, Chris, 
why don't you just leave America, go and train in England with Dorian and come back and just be the best you ever been. And I didn't take him, I didn't take him up on that because I'm like, well, I'm training with Charles Glass. You know, they say he's the best in the world. I'm comfortable here, mm -hmm. blah, blah, blah. But if in my, in my prime is in your 34, 35 year zone, if I would have made myself super uncomfortable, like, and you, you see it all the time, you see it now, don't you? With, with competitors, they get comfortable, and then next thing you know, the show is over for them. Mm -hmm. And when the show is over, the show is just over. That's why it won't be a no comeback for me or something like that, because there's nothing to come back to. I'm not going to show my best physique ever. Right. And that was my goal is to show the best physique because I could. But just think if I'm training different, like you get complacent with the training, you get a pump, but it's like, you know, are you scared to go to the gym? No. Are you, are you, are you, uh, you know, when I actually went to go train with Dorian was after the fact of me, you know, getting hurt as far as my spinal infection I got, um, and, you know, being in a coma and all that stuff, I still went to go train with Dorian. That was when I was 43 at the time now, but mm -hmm. if I would have went there six years before that, I think it would have been a no brainer. I could have won the Olympia for yeah. sure. Hundred yeah. percent. Because even when I went, when I was about to go there, before I got hurt, I was two ninety five. I had abs. I was getting ready for the Olympia. I had twelve weeks to go. And I was gonna go and train with him. And I was standing um, the East Coast, and then that's what happened. My my biggest regret is not taking action before then. If I just kept, you know, my circle as small as I as it was in my hungriest years, and just kept that same little thing. And I was around, the, and I made sure I was around the right people and they're doing the right things. Uh, that that would play a part in me being uh, not being where I wanted to be. I wanted to be, a, you know, a killer up there. I, mm -hmm. I came here to beat everybody, and I was right there to do it. But if I would have been pushed into, you know, those those sets, those reps that was death defying reps and death defying sets and strict on all the food. And all. Yeah, I, I could have won an Olympian. I, I think that. Uh, should definitely, that should definitely won at least an Arnold then. I did win an Arnold, man. <laughs> what? I'm going to tell him, don't get me riled up on that shit. I <laughs> <laughs> damn it. Yeah, yeah. You, how many how many times you play second at the Arnold? Six times? Seven Six times? Six in a row. Six, Six in, in a row. row. That's fucking that's But crazy. the eye test will tell you I definitely came away with at least two of those. Um, two of those. Easily two of those. And and I it was a lot of people who took second in Olympia, won the Arnold, that place why, behind why, me. In, why? In the Arnold. Why? What do you think is the reason for you not winning at least one after placing six Bro, times I second? Can't, I can't. All I could do is ask because, like, this is a sport where you can't slam dunk it. You can't get the touchdown. You can't, uh, you know, knock the guy out. So I can only go off of what people say. Mm -hmm. But I never met a judge to this day that told me, no, I didn't win it at least twice. I can't, I can't find a judge that tell me, no. No, Chris, you wasn't the best up there. I was the best. I was the best up there. A what, couple times. what years? What years do you think you should have won? For sure, 2004. And and I think <clears throat> me and Flex, I think we should have traded places. Cause I Which, what year? Murdered, murdered In 2000? Him. Yeah, murdered him too. I murdered him. A week before? The week before. I know. I was on the I stage with you guys. Time. Yeah. That was my first That's Arnold and my first Iron Man. Right. So see, and there's the run. Uh, yeah, I, I got. I was looking at the video the other day when you were backstage there, and I forgot you was in that show. Yeah. But yeah. you was in there. You you was in the second call out. I was in the first second, call out. Second, first call. First call out. No, 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 no. Wait a minute. Second call out. You're right. Second because because back then they do it only three in the call out. There was like yeah, I know. like night. Like, Dexter and me, Dexter and him, and then you came no, out. No, 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 no. What do you mean? What 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 show are you talking about now? Oh, was Dexter in that show? What I show are Dexter. you talking about? 
The Iron Man. Oh yeah, the Iron Man. Yeah, second call out. Yeah, Dexter. Dexter, Flex, you and me. Yeah, yeah. And then you was with uh, the guy from Germany, um, uh, Gunther. I don't remember. See, I don't remember that. Like, I don't remember what was going on at Iron Man. I just watched. That's why. That's why. I, I remember the Arnold though, because at the Arnold, I didn't even get an invite until Wednesday before the Arnold. <laughs> I was told before the Iron Man, if I place top six, I will, invite they invite me. And I got seventh because Jay Cutler got sixth, I think, or fourth. But then yeah. Jay, Jay Cutler tested positive. I didn't know that. Somebody tested positive that was ahead of me. I, don't, I think it was Jay. I don't remember. <laughs> and so I figured, you know, now should I yeah, be in the nice. top six? But that didn't come out till later. So, but... I remember I'm training in, in Coliseum with Milos, and you know, Milos said, stay on your diet, stay on your diet. And Monday, nothing. Tuesday, nothing. <laughs> Fuck. I, I went to the Cheesecake Factory and I bought the cheesecake, two pieces, big pieces of cheesecake. I put them in, I put them in the fridge at the Marriott Residence Inn in Fullerton. Yeah. And then uh, I remember um, I did a photo shoot with Chris Lunt on Wednesday morning. And Peter McGuff was there. You know, he used to come to the shoots and still look at guys. And he, him, and Jim communicated. And they put in the call. So I got a call Wednesday evening, on no, Wednesday afternoon, to so get a ticket, go to Columbus. <laughs> Boom, I went to Columbus. And did my first Arnold and placed fourth. I remember that. That was awesome, though, right? Yeah, man. I, and now I get to stand next to, like, to the, the top guys. Flex, you, Kevin, you know? Yeah. And yeah. then, uh, and yeah, I, and I remember I placed fourth in my first Arnold. I was like, and Damn, quali that's qualified that's for the Olympia. Was, yeah, I was fourth in my first Arnold. That was awesome. Yeah, man, that's that was that was something back then to do that. If you have um, a pick, if you have a pick, one show a particular year where you were at your best. Ninety nine. Ninety nine Olympia. <laughs> yeah, you yeah. know why? Because everything was perfect. I was relaxed. Was that one in New York? Chilling. Huh? Was that the one in New York? No, that was ninety eight. Was in New York. That was 98. See, 98 was different. For me, 98 was, uh, I did my own diet. I just got in shape. I was I was sharp. And uh, I took six. I, I, played, I think I could have placed up in fourth or third or fourth, in my opinion. But that's my opinion. But I thought, I thought, okay, now I'm right up there with these guys. Like mm -hmm. now, no matter what show, I'm still going to be up there if I come in and do what I'm supposed to do. So then that's when NASA was saying stuff. And I, in the, you know, he was, I was just like, no, I'm going to take third next year. I said that in the, in the, in the, in the battle for Olympia videotape, I said, I've been sixth many times. It's time for me to be, to move up to the top three. Yeah. And that's, that's when I made my, that move. was an awesome year. I remember what you, you looked unbelievable. So that show. Okay. So that getting ready for that show, I'm flying to Vegas every weekend. Up until five weeks out. To what? To do what? To party? To dance and to go to the club. <laughs> <laughs> and the mess and the messed up part is, you know, no one even knew I was doing that. But that's they were giving me a free room because they knew I was going to come in and perform. But if you understand me, I'm a shy person naturally. I'm shy. You're probably shy when you're not high. Yeah, I'm shy. <laughs> <laughs> but I'm shy. Okay. Right? Naturally shy. So that's why you don't see me doing a whole lot of things cause, just because I'm shy, not because uh -huh. I don't want to or whatever. So I was doing that to get my nerve up, to get my nerve up to be in front of people and to do whatever. Yeah, that's, that's you know, it's funny you say that because, you know, and I believe you, you know, I believe you're, you're, you're a totally different that's person. True, people was, I was misunderstood. Like, I just can't stay out of the club. No, I'm so shy that I'm not. I'm going to do, that's why I did this slow music. Most of my career was this because I didn't want to do anything that's too fast. That's uh, going to make, that's going to be embarrassing uh, to me. So, <laughs> so I, I was doing that and I stopped at five weeks out. And then when I got there, I was so going to Vegas and I was like, so that's when I did that routine in 99 when I was just like, just doing the most, you know, I was yeah. just like, boom, just like, this is, this is what I did, you know? Yeah. So, but people misunderstood me. Like, I just couldn't stay out of the club. But no, I was trying to get my nerve up to be able to perform and, you know, move the crowd and, you know, bring the crowd in. You know, when you start getting that, working on your stage presence, as a rookie, you're not 
moving the crowd. You're not yeah. trying to yeah. bring the crowd into what you're doing, into your world. You're just trying to get up there and get off. Yeah. But I was just trying to get your I feet needed, wet. I needed, yeah. I needed to bring, I need, you know, no one's really clapping for you when you're a rookie. You know, that was really, they don't really know who you are. That's you how I felt. Listen, you, I'm so, it's so <laughs> funny you say that. Yeah. This is what happened to me at the Arnold, my first Arnold in 2000. Me too. <laughs> you, let, let me tell you my story. Because, you know, you win the USA's. It's not like today. Because today you turn pro and, and people, I, I see people, hey, how you doing? What are you doing? Oh, I'm an IFB pro. What? You know, because yeah. you don't know. Yeah. I don't know these guys. Right. But uh, I remember I, my first Arnold, I was at the booth for um, um, Europa. Let me sit at the booth. Before, you know, back then it was still a one-day show, like it was until last year. This year it's going to be a two-day show. Yeah. And I uh, sat there, you know, had some autographs. Cause I was U.S. champion. I figured, you know, I might be selling some pictures. <laughs> I, didn't, <laughs> I didn't sell one picture. <laughs> I sat there. Hey, Chris, I sat there like I sat there like this here. Had my pic- I had my pictures here, like all up, hey, shaking my fucking sharpie the whole time. <laughs> <laughs> I'm shaking the sharpie like I'm getting ready to sign an autograph. Ready to go. <laughs> <laughs> Listen, and I and I get some people standing, pa- walking past me, and they be like. Is that you in the picture? Motherfucker, who do you think this is? <laughs> <laughs> is that you? I, didn't, you I didn't sell nothing. That was Friday. Saturday morning, pre-judging. I go on stage. I come off stage for pre-judging. I go back to the booth. I sold every picture I had. They're, they're like that here. Yes. That was like, you know, they didn't, they, they, you know, this, winning the USA is fine, but that doesn't carry you over into, into the pros. And just give you a name, people know back then there was one, oh, one, one pro card, not like today, one 50. Pro card. Yeah. You know, you win the USA's, the world will know. It will be in the Flex yeah. magazine, the whole world know you're a pro. That's right. why we didn't have to put IFB Pro next to our name on social media. Come on, man. <laughs> like, yeah. Bro, but check this out. When I, when I came to my first one, they, they said, Chris, they're calling me Chris Cormier back then. So Chris Cormier, and, you know, we had a, uh, uh, Susie Colbert was backstage uh, giving interviews and stuff. And I was just like looking at all the stars like, man, do I have like no claps? Nobody clapped. Yeah. When I did my routine and then did my, my pro thing, I was like, okay. The next year, I did it 10 times. So the next time it got a little bit more, a little bit more. Yeah. But like, like you said, but when you go back in, when they see you in the prejudging after that, you know, that's how the fans were, even in New York. Same thing. If they don't really know you, they're not really feeling you. You know, they're gonna let you know. But then, when they start to feel you, they give you the love. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And you the got, funny he, thing is, that I found a lot of tapes, Dennis. Uh, I was videotaping a lot of my photo shoots, and I was video, and I found all these tapes. And I got on DVD now, and I got when I went to New York, the the you know, the, the night of champions. They, I had like two or three people stop me on the way to the pro the program, but on the way out after they saw me in the pre judging. They just swarmed me, you know, yeah. and it was like, I got all that on videotape. It's awesome. I'm going to try to put it out there, but no one has none of this footage. It was all with my camera. Yeah. yeah. Got me in the hotel room. Got me. Oh, you got everywhere. a lot of, you must have a lot of footage, man. That was a lot, a of, lot footage, of footage with Chris Cormier. A lot of shows, bro. Yeah. How's your documentary going? Uh, it's going well. Yeah. It's going well. I just did a, uh, a uh, let's did a, uh, uh, I just did a, uh, a certification for the Mr. Olympia Academy out of Algeria. Shout out to them. Oh, okay. Yeah, I just did that. So I did a certification class uh, for the Algerians. Uh, so, um, yeah, that was that's why I couldn't come on till till later. Got you. Uh, so that's just then, for uh, just for people in Algeria. Yeah, it was Algeria people okay. for the for the for the Mr. Olympia uh, certification academy. Mm. I'm ready. All right, my man. I think I Just think give me, that. Give me the baton because I'm ready to go. I, I will. I will. I'm okay. I'm serious. I I'm, I see right. you tomorrow for sure. We get in. Me and Rami. We get in like like ten or eleven o'clock tomorrow night. Good. And Rami's flying in from Egypt. Tell tell Rami that story that I said. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Don't get complacent. Yeah. Don't get complacent. You oh, already yeah. ate. We saw you got your food. Yeah. Don't get complacent. Right. Finish out right. You tell him yourself. I will. All right, brother. <laughs> Thank you, man. I appreciate you making the time. I will see you tomorrow, and then right, uh, we'll have a good weekend in Columbus. Take care, my man. Be safe. For sure. We'll Take talk. Care. Thank bye you. bye. bye.